This is part two of My Stepmother Destroyed My Fiancé's Sister's Wedding Dress. If you want to see part one of this saga story, check out the description below and let's jump into part two. After my mother-in-law blacked out and attacked my stepmom, she was in deep trouble. She broke her nose and multiple ribs and my stepmom was not willing to negotiate. She wanted to get my mother-in-law thrown into jail. I did not think that it was fair at all. My stepmom was the one who first ruined Jane's dress. I tried to speak to my father about it and show him the evidence of what his wife did and he said that it was because I refused to accept my stepmom even from a young age. Well, I was taken aback. I tried to be a good daughter to her but she just abused me. I asked my dad if he was going to take her side once again. Then he told me that he had a hard time taking my side after I set my mother on my stepmom and made her lose her chairperson position. Is that all that matters to you? Making her happy? What about your own daughter's future? I burst out loud and he was silent. He told me to be prepared because my stepmom was pressing charges. And as I was leaving, I heard laughter in the backyard as well as the smell of food. I did not leave. I circled around the back and there I came face to face with stepmother, Carly, Brandon, and their kids, as well as Steve, my ex, and my stepmom was seated on a chair, wrapped up in a bandages, and when she saw me, she told Carly to take her back to her house. I asked Steve what he was doing there, and he said that he was catching up with Brandon. For context, Steve is the ex that I had a hard time getting over. I dated him when I was in college, only to find out that Brandon knew that he was cheating on me with somebody else. I forgave him and he proposed to me, but Carly and Brandon both knew that it was just a ring and he was planning to leave town. He ghosted me for no reason at all and sent Carly to tell me that I was out of his league. It broke my heart, but it was the starting point of a joke between my stepfamily. Because of it, they told me that I chased all my boyfriends away and none of them would ever be committed to me. Heck. I was so insecure about myself, they found ways to be friends with all the people that I dated and to make sure that my relationships ended whether directly or indirectly. I never had proof, but seeing those three having a barbecue in my father's yard made me lose my mind. Steve had the nerve to say, Nancy, it's been a while. Join us. What are you doing here? I thought that you left for greener pastures. Well, I guess you were going to find out anyways, but I recently connected with my friends here, and they're in a pickle. Their mother got assaulted, and I'm going to be their lawyer. Of course, if anything can go wrong, it'll be terribly wrong. I froze. I was at a loss for words and upset that they've all decided to gang up on my mother-in-law. From my stepfamily, I more than expected it, but not from my father. We should catch up with a drink sometime. I could see that familiar spark in his eyes. He was trying to test out if he still had an effect on me and play me. I smiled back and smudgedly showed him the ring on my finger. If I had known you were in town, then I would have invited you to my wedding. But now I guess there's a conflict of interest. Oh, don't act surprised. Both of us knew that you filed a case against my mother-in-law. Spoiler, you will lose. And then I turned on my heel and left. When I left, I blocked my father and told my mom what happened. I got no response since she was always so busy. Sam and I got a good lawyer for his mom and then we countersued. I put my wedding preparation on hold and focused on my mother-in-law's case. It was a very tiring process, and trust me, we did what we could. But that weasel Steve was good at what he did. He spun the story in such a way that he got my mother-in-law six months in prison. As for my mother-in-law, she got away with a slap on the wrist. She had to pay $15,000 for the replacement of the dress, do three months of community service, and was banned from the shop where she vandalized. I didn't feel like that was enough, so... I went to one of my friends, Alice. Alice works in the community newspaper, and they do some blog posting and pieces, mainly just fluff stories. I sold her a story of what happened, and I felt that my mother-in-law's sentence was not fair. 
But then, of course, my stepmom managed to get the story retracted and threatened to sue me for defamation of character. Seeing as I would probably not win the fight against her, I just focused on the wedding. I was starting to wonder if I should even have a wedding. I did tell that to some of my closest friends, not knowing that my text messages were being spied on in order to ruin me later on. What did end up almost costing me my marriage was Steve and his obsession with me. As you know, he did me dirty. I healed out, and that does not mean that when I see him, I don't experience extreme anger. I despise him for those lies and broken promises he gave me. Steve asked to meet with me because he said he needs to discuss the terms of the settlement. When I got there, he was disorganized, and it appeared that he had, well, shown up for nothing. I told him that I was going to leave, and he could discuss this with my lawyer, but then he admitted to me that he had a drinking problem. Why... Anyone would admit that to his ex is somehow beyond me. He told me that he had been trying to keep sober, but he was so nervous about seeing me again, and then he held my hand, and I instantly recoiled. I felt no pity, even though he clearly looked to be an absolute mess. He told me that even though he had his whole career, seeing me again made him realize that he fumbled the bag. His speech got even more slurry, and he became emotional. I was freaked out about all this because this was not why I agreed to meet up with him. Right as I was telling him that he needs to drink water and go home, he passes out flat on the table. I was shocked and annoyed because I had dinner with Sam in just a few hours. I thought that maybe I should leave him there and let him be someone else's problem. Believe me, I should have. But then instead, I decided to be the good Samaritan and help him out. After I paid the bills, I tried to wake him up. I did manage to get his thumb to open his phone and found out which hotel he was staying at. I got him there and handed him to the concierge, and trust me, there's nothing heavier than a drunk man putting all his weight on you. I told her to take care of him, gave her my number to let me know if he needs anything, and honestly, I was very concerned about him because this was not the first time. He's had problems with alcohol in the past, and often became violent. I sent him a text to tell me where we were and when he woke up, and told him to get a grip on himself because I was not his mother. I swear I did not love him anymore, but seeing him as such a mess kind of messed with my heart just a bit. I went home to Sam. I was staying with him since we were getting married anyways, and I found him asleep. Realizing that I missed the dinner that I promised to make for him, I felt genuinely guilty. I resolved to wake up early and make up to him. Well, when I woke up, Sam was not speaking to me and he had my phone on the table in front of me as well as his phone. I asked what was going on and then he slid his phone to me. It was pictures. And those pictures did not look good. Someone took pictures of me and Steve when we met, when he held my hand, and when I had to keep him up so that he could enter the cab. And us at the hotel. And then... On my phone, there were my chats with him. My last message was me telling him to message me when he woke up. The message he sent back was that, Thank you for taking care of me last night. You've always been kind. What the hell's happening with you and your ex? When did this start? When the trial of my mother was happening, were you feeding him info so my mom could be locked away? I was puzzled, and I asked him, how'd you even know that he was my ex? I was puzzled because he kept the info a secret. I only had to do a quick Google search after someone sent me those pictures, and I recognized him. Are you cheating on me when my mother is in prison? He was so angry. I could see it in his eyes. I tried to explain, but he took off his ring and set it on the table. Maybe we should just reconsider this marriage. My mom's in a prison cell and you seem confused. And well, that was how I ended up single once again. I was so upset that I blocked Steve and all the calls that he made. I didn't know if it was innocent or not, but I blamed him for what happened. Soon enough, I moved out of his apartment and went to stay with my friend Alice. Sam's mom did not take the news well, but she believed me. 
She told me to be patient, but I knew that I've been falsely accused, and I've lost the man that I love the most. My stepmom was happy. She sent me gloating messages and reminded me that I was an ugly duckling, that nobody wanted me. Her kids harassed me when they saw me, and I knew that I was the talk of the office. People start to question my character, and I absolutely hated it. I told my mom what happened, and she told me that she would help me find a job where she stayed and I could easily move away from Sam and all the drama with my stepmother. She wanted to help, but I was also upset with her. She knew all that happened to me, but she never responded to my messages. She was not emotionally supportive of me, and that made me less inclined to move closer to her. I had been in crisis, but all she did was help me run away. I realized right then that I was alone, and maybe I was the common denominator for all my relationships failing. And then, Alice told me that they were starting an anonymous caller advice segment, and they needed people to help out. My evenings were free, and I figured what better way to make myself useful. It was usually just calls from people wanting advice, dealing with life problems, etc. Until the day I got a call from Carly. I knew her voice. She said that her husband was abusing her and the kids and that she had often had to cover up with makeup, but her mother was forcing her to stay because she was fearful of her reputation. I just knew it was Carly. So after the call, I went to her house. She was not in the best state of mind and did not ask questions about how I knew. I asked her why she did not leave and she said that her mom did not pay her enough money. I got her in touch with some organizations that could help her and her kids with a place to stay. I've known something was up, but seeing what she went through made me realize that maybe she was not all that bad. She was, but a victim of being surrounded by people who did not love her. Carly ended up staying at the shelter and filing for divorce from her husband. And we ended the bad blood right then and right there. We were not best of friends, but she knew I had her back. It was very strange, but we kept it from her mother. I felt sorry for her now that I knew how far the abuse of my stepmom extended. So, even though I lost Sam, and at least I was able to help someone else, one day, Sam called me and told me that he wants to meet. When I went to his house, I saw that his mother was back from prison after four months because of good behavior. I was still shocked about why he wanted to see me, and... After she left, he told me a whirlwind of a story. Carly came to him some days ago, claiming that I've been framed and I never cheated. Her mother and Steve came up with a plan to break up my engagement. They had Steve pretend to be drunk so that they could take those photos, and not only that, but my father-in-law had been reading my text between me and my friends, and which I said that I was not sure if I wanted to get married or not. She took them out of context and sent them to Sam, who, well, dumped me. After I helped Carly out, she realized that her mother was the enemy. She told Sam about it, and she also told her Aunt Margaret. So, now she was leaving town to stay with Aunt Margaret, and she did what she should have done ages ago, which was tell the truth. I was pleasantly shocked, and to be honest, but even more shocked when Sam said that he wanted to get married. But I told him that we could not, because there was no venue. He told me that he had something up his sleeve, but my mother-in-law had to dress me first, so I got dressed in my wedding dress and followed her. There, at the venue, I saw my mother, Alice, Carly. Carly said that she was leaving soon, but wanted to be present at the wedding. My mother said that she read the messages I've sent and realized that she's been terrible to me. I mean, we're not 100% okay, but I think that we will be eventually. Well... The best part of the update. I got married in my dream venue with only a few witnesses present. After the wedding, all of us went our separate ways and I posted the pictures the very next morning. It was satisfying seeing the people who were shocked that Sam and I were back together. I was glad that they got to eat their words. After they laughed at me for months, but the best part, the very best part is, that my dad is done with that woman. He finally saw her for who she was after finding out what happened to Carly, and he should have opened his eyes to who she was a long time ago. But it's better late than never, they say, and unfortunately for him, though, they've been married for several years. As I've heard the rumor mill, she wants to sue him for more than half of his assets. 
I don't care how that goes. Why should I? When my dad's been seeing how she is for years, why does it take Carly being abused for him to now decide that he doesn't want to be with her anymore? If anything, I know that he's a people pleaser, and he does not want to be associated with her because of the things coming to light about her. Carly is still stuck in an ugly divorce, and the more things are revealed about her mother forced her into that marriage, the more my stepmom's being despised around town. But hey, not my circus, not my clowns. I'm happily married to the man of my life, and she did not win. So I think the good thing about this story is OP was able to end it on a happy note. No longer caring about her stepmother or even what her father's up to. So my question to you guys is, what would you have done if you were in OP's position on this part two of the story? Go ahead and drop your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for more daily videos. Have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next one.